This week I'm going to teach you about duress alarms and the two absolutely essential things you need so that they work for you. Hi, this is Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com and the creator of the Investigator's Ultimate Guide series, which is premium private investigator training from someone who's been there and done that. Now, a duress alarm is a way to covertly notify uh, the security force or the police department that you are under duress, that somebody is forcing you to do something that you do not want to do. But it's set up in a way that the person who is threatening you doesn't even know that you have tripped the alarm or, or uh, sounded that you need help. So a very typical example of this would be an alarm system, say, on a retail store. There are, there's a passcode that the store manager, when they open up in the morning, they can punch in the alarm code, it deactivates the alarm, and they go on as if business as, business as usual. But if the manager's under duress, if someone's holding a gun to his or her head, forcing them to open the store so they can get access to the safe or whatever, the manager can punch in a different access code, which di does shut down the alarm. Everything looks as if it's going as it should to the bad guy. But where the alarm company recognizes this, the alarm was shut down but under duress and the alarm company will notify the police or take the actions that they've established ahead of time. And that's an example of a duress alarm. Duress alarms can be, there's a wide variety of them. They can be very clever. Little things like a certain light being turned on can indicate to a security team that a person is under duress. And frequently there's even certain phrases or uh, statements that can be made that sound completely harmless and go with the natural flow of conversation but are only said when the person needs to alert security and get help for themselves. Those types of phrases and, and systems are kept very close to the vest. I, I can't give you any real world examples because the ones that I know and the ones that I've even established are being used now. I have one real world example for you that's made it into the news, it's out there so I can share it with you. And that is in my town, uh, recently we had a large convention. When that happens, of course, in any town that happens in, uh, the human trafficking goes through the roof. Women are brought in really from all over the country. Um, and these women can find themselves here, uh, obviously, frequently against their will. One of the local bars did a very clever thing. They put up signs and uh, just really photocopies in the women's restrooms that said, we understand that uh, human trafficking is a huge problem. If you are a victim of this or need help, here's the toll-free number to the national hotline and they can direct you towards more resources or they can help take care of you. But here's where the duress alarm came in. They also gave the option, if you need immediate help and you're afraid to ask for it directly, simply go to the bartender and order an angel shot. Now here's the thing, there is no such thing as an angel shot, but when a woman would go to the bartender and order this, the bartender immediately knows that she's in trouble and he's to call the police right away. All right, great system, nobody knows that anything's happened, the cops are there before the bad guys, uh, the men who are holding the women there against their will even know that anything's happened. Ph phenomenal system, duress systems are great, I love them. Here are the two things that are absolutely necessary to get them to work and, and to work properly. Number one, the person using the duress system has to know exactly what's going to happen when they activate the duress system. So uh, a cashier in a retail establishment may be uh, dealing with someone who's forcing uh, him or her to open a cash register and do a transaction that's a theft. But they're still afraid to use the duress system to push the button or to use the phrase, for example, because they're afraid security will come down there and uh, the cashiers are worried that they're going to end up getting hurt or that the bad guy is going to know that they've activated the duress system. You know, so if, if she's worried, the cashier's worried that she can activate the duress system, but the next thing that comes over the announcement system is security respond to cashier number 16, she's going to be too afraid to use that system. So number one, she's got to know exactly, the person using the duress alarm needs to know exactly what's going to happen. And this is the type of thing that if you run a, uh, a security force or something like this, drill with people, work it through them, train them on it, and then walk them through. Show them, here's what happens if you press the button. Here's what happens if you say the phrase. The number, otherwise they'll be too afraid to use it. The number two thing that must happen, must be in place for a duress system to work is the person receiving the duress signal, the alarm company, the security force, whatever it is, they have to have policies and procedures in place that click in automatically uh, so that they know what to do. If they get a duress alarm 
and they got to figure it out on their own for the moment. Do they respond immediately to the cash register? Do they call the police? Do they bring up the cameras and look to see what's going on? Do they call the cashier? These are questions that are going to go on in the mind of the responder. So that needs to all be spelled out in policies and procedures. And one really good policy and procedure, if you're setting these up, is to have the security person call the person who, uh, who set off the alarm and ask simple yes or no questions. So the cashier can answer yes or no questions without alerting the person right there beside her that there's a problem. The phone rings, the security person might just ask, uh, we've received a duress alarm from uh, your cash register. Is the person still with you there now? Yes. Do you want us to call the police? Yes. Or whatever those questions might be. You really have to work through them. But make sure that that number two thing, policies and procedures, is in place for the person who's receiving the duress alarm. This is Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com. Remember, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.